Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. Today is my 10th day in my 12 days of Christmas projects countdown. Um, today we're using the Jolly Words stamp set from the uh, September to December 2023 mini catalog. Um, I have done two or three projects every single one of these days, so make sure you go back and check out the other projects um, if you're looking for lots of Christmas inspiration. All right, the first thing that we are gonna make is this card. And um, this card has some lines. I was, I really kind of thought like, how can I use this um, differently? And I wanted the Ho 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 to be embossed in gold. And then I wanted to color the rest with my blends. So we're gonna stamp this doing a lot of masking, um, once in verse mark and once in memento black. Now you're gonna need a stamp positioning tool to do this. I am using our Stamparatus, which is retired, but I know many of you have your own um, stamp positioning tools. You're gonna need some Post-it tape, and I will have this linked today on my blog post. Um, I use Post-it tape a lot. And here we're actually gonna use a lot of Post-it tape. We are gonna post, we're gonna uh, mask off everything except for the ho ho ho. Now you'll notice in the image that the antlers kind of run into the ho ho ho, um, and that's okay if we stamp the antlers a little bit in gold. I found that you really, really couldn't tell. Um, when you get down here close, you're going to have to start really kind of tearing pieces to try to get those things masked really well. Um, let's see, where are my scissors? We'll snip some of this and make it skinny so that we can fit it through like that. It's got to be exactly the right width. If it's too skinny, it's not going to work because it's not going to cover up what you need. And if it's not skinny enough, it's going to cover up the things you want exposed. All right, so I'm just going to piece this together going around and around trying to get all of those little um, lines covered up. This one that goes between the ho-ho-ho is a little tricky. You gotta keep trimming until you get it just right. All right, so you can see right here, those antlers are gonna be caught up in the gold. I think it'll be all right. See, mine are gold and you really can't even tell. Okay, I think we've got it. This is, you don't wanna have to do this again. So make sure you've got it right the first time. I mean, you could do it again if you want. It's just a lot of pieces. I've got my two and a fourth inch by four and a uh, fourth inch piece of basic white here positioned perfectly. I'm gonna use my embossing buddy. I'm gonna take Versamark and ink up those letters, make sure they're nice and inked up. And then I'm gonna take off this, the tape, because you've got an ink now on the tape, and if you stamped it with the tape on there, it would put a smush of Versamark all over. All right, stamp that. And then don't take it off. Let's see, mine's come up a little bit. Let's see if we can push it down. And we're gonna leave it on there, and I'm gonna sprinkle gold on here very carefully. I'm gonna take this off, and now you're probably gonna need a paintbrush to get all of those that may have gotten the gold on them. They're where we don't want them. So just get a skinny paintbrush. You can blow it. Now, just depending on, whoops, depending on, now I have to start over because I wasn't being careful. Let me set this down. Depending on how well you're, you've, um, you know, use your embossing buddy, the humidity, I don't know. Some days I find that I don't need to do this at all, and some days I find that I have to do it a lot. But today, we've got some rogue sprinkler, sprinkles that we don't wanna stay there because they really will sh 
show up. All right, once you've got that all in place, it's kind of like doing surgery here. I'm gonna take my heat tool and heat it up. Now, when I stamped that, Versamark's real sticky. I didn't have my magnets on there real well and that paper pulled up a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully when we set down with a memento, it'll be still in the right place. That's why you have to leave your paper there. Now you could put it up in the corner. That way you could put it there and it would be in the same place. But I just find that I don't do, I never can quite get it right in the right place. So I like to use my magnets. All right, now this time we're gonna cut pieces to go over the words. So now we need to mask the words. And the tricky part is that it's kind of rounded. So you're gonna have to cut, you're gonna have to really cut your um, tape to get it to cover those. Now, if this is too much work for you, you really could just stamp the whole thing in gold embossing powder and then color it in. But I was really trying to do something different. I wanted to see if I could do this and I really liked how it turned out. All right, let's see. This one's gonna be a really tricky because it's got two things real close to it. So I'm gonna work with some small pieces and you can kind of tuck those in. Let's cut this one down and go across. All right, we need one more small little piece. Let's see if this one will work. All right, I think we are good. I'm trying to see what that is. All right, now I'm gonna take Memento Black and ink that really well. And then I'm gonna pick up those pieces. Now remember this has ink on it, so don't get it on your fingers. All right, here we go. Perfect, yay, it worked, all right. I was worried that my paper had shifted, but it did not. Okay, now let me clean up a little bit and we'll, we will color these. I am gonna use, let's see, I'm gonna use real red. I've got all my reds over here. I'm gonna use real red and I'm gonna start here on his sleigh and I'm gonna just do a light real red. And we're gonna color the whole thing. And he it looks like he's got maybe a blanket in there. I can't really tell. It's hard to de delineate between what's his, his suit and what is his, um, like there looks like maybe there's a bag in there. I can't totally tell. But we're gonna, we're just gonna make it up as we go. All right, so add some dark here and underneath the lip there, and then some dark around the edge, like that. And then I'm gonna, anywhere in the inside would be dark, darker than the outside. I didn't bring my glasses over here today. So I'm having a hard time seeing, okay. Now I think I'll use Poppy Parade for his suit. And his hat, I don't think I need any dark. And then I have Light Pebbled Path for whatever this is in here. Maybe it's his sack, maybe it's his pants. Oops, I just colored the white, oh well. The white part of the suit. So now it's definitely, it's definitely a blanket. <laughs> oh well. 
Now this is a, a gift card holder. It will hold a card, a gift card, because I know we're getting close to Christmas. I know I'm just starting to buy lots of gift cards and things for all those hard to purchase for people. All right, so I use cherry cobbler on the bag and I'm going back to real red for those presents. Now on um, our little reindeer, we are going to add in the red for their harness. And then I'm gonna use crumb cake and pecan pie for their bodies. So we'll use crumb cake for their bodies. Get them all colored in. And these are pretty small, so I'm not even gonna attempt to do any kind of shading. I don't think you really need to here. He only has four reindeer on his sleigh, which makes it a little bit easier for us for our coloring. Okay, last but not least, grab pecan pie and we'll color in those antlers. All right, now we are ready to assemble. Now this um, has some measurements that you'll need and you'll find them on today's blog post. We're gonna start with just a four and a fourth by five and a half inch piece of balmy blue. And I'm gonna add, this is the, oh no, I'm drawing a blank. This is the, well, I can't remember the name of this paper, but it is still available. Now you wanna make an accordion of this guy. He's gonna go right in the middle. So fold it down, this part's gonna come up like, let's see, do I, how do I want it? I want it to come up like that, okay? Put that right there. Then I've got another piece of this designer series paper that we'll put right here. Oh no, I didn't make it long enough. All right, well, let's make it, let's make it shallower and that will give it the same an equal distance border all around it. There we go, that's better. All right, and then we're going to adhere this to a piece of our disco ball paper. That's what I like to call it, disco ball paper. And then we'll put the scalloped border down here, like that. And now we'll just attach the whole thing to the front. And you know, it looks like maybe my pieces weren't quite the right measurements. Let's see, can I trim off this without cutting some of that reindeer? thought it was a four and a fourth, but I'm thinking it needed to be four. All right, we'll make it all even. There we go, no problem. All right, on the inside, this is where you're gonna put your gift card holder. And I punched a little circle right there, but I didn't bring the punch over today, unfortunately. Any size circle will work. And I'm just gonna put a liquid adhesive on three sides to make a pocket. And then I've got this piece of basic white that will go right there for your message. All right. Now I have a piece of my uh, real red and gold ribbon, and we're just gonna make like a little pull tab, okay? So I've glued it together, and now I'm gonna take it and glue it on the back like that. And it's gonna take some time to dry, so I'm just gonna take my clothespin and put that there. I also have some of our Elegant Trim, which is currently out of stock, but we'll be back in January. This has been very popular this holiday season. Do I have glue dots? I do, right here. Okay. 
And we will take just our, oh no, don't come undone. Don't come undone. We'll take this and put it right there. There we go, like that. All right, and so when we take the clothespin off, obviously, it will look like this. And this fits in a regular envelope, one of our uh, card envelopes that we have. Okay, there you go, first project. Now my second project is um, a 3D project, and I was inspired when I found, let me get rid of this tape so I don't get ink on anything. I was inspired when I found these little Tic Tac, naughty and nice. I found them at Target, but I've linked them today for you on Amazon. And I thought of these little elves for some reason, I thought this would be cute. And so I've made a double Tic Tac holder, okay? Isn't that fun? Okay, let's, let's make the holder first. Again, measurements, I don't wanna tell you the measurements because I will always say them wrong, but I will type them up on um, my blog post. So this is what your piece looks like after you've scored it and you've folded it in. You're also gonna need two of these, and I don't have these scored, so we will score these. All right, I've grabbed my Simply Scored, and these are four by two and three fourths. On the long side, we're gonna do half an inch, one and an eighth, two and seven eighths, and three and a half. On the short side, you're gonna do half an inch and one and an eighth, okay? And then do that again. So half an inch, one and an eighth, two and seven eighths, three and a half. Turn it, half an inch and one and an eighth. These are the little pockets for our Tic Tac boxes, okay? So I'm going to burnish all these lines. And then I'm gonna cut this little corner out right here. And when I do, I'm gonna cut all the way in, okay? So like that, and like that. And truly, I don't really even think that you need this. Let's just cut this corner off. We're gonna make it real simple. So cut those four corners off. Okay. And let's burnish these lines. And again, these off all right so now these are going to fold around your tic tacs like this all right so really we're going to take um some tear and tape and add tear and tape to these furthest out tabs one two, three, and let's get the backings off. All right, and then we're gonna just kind of wrap that around like that, okay? And then let's do this one in the same way I will tell you that my daughter, my youngest daughter, loves candy. She says these are good. There's also some, she loves trolley, the sour candies, and there's trolley coal candy, which looks absolutely disgusting to me, but she tried them and she said they were so good. So if you see those, they make a funny gift any kind of coal candy, I think, makes a funny gift. All right, so now let's wrap this around like this again. So we've got the adhesive on the back, and this will slide out of your pocket like that. And we're going to center these 
on here. And I want to do them at the same time so that they are exactly together. You gotta get them inside those score lines. There we go. All right, so that closes around like that. And these slide out like that. I have some more designer series paper. Now, unfortunately, this Mary Bold and Bright designer series paper has sold out. But if you don't have it, look to see what you have and just change your cardstock to match your DSP. This is Poppy Parade cardstock that I've used to match the color in the DSP. Okay, and I'm gonna flip this over like this. I guess I should have put the paper on before I put the Tic Tacs in, huh? Oh well. All right, so then we're gonna close it up and I have a little sneak peek for you. This is some ribbon, it's actually sweet sorbet ribbon from the upcoming January to April mini catalog. But I wanted to use it because I love it. It's skinny and it's got a white border on it. It's actually Sweet Sorbet, but Sweet Sorbet and Poppy Parade are very similar and they go really well together. So we're gonna tie that closed like that. Snip, snip. All right, now for our cute little, our little guys. Now this has the joy and I thought about adding that, but it doesn't really go with our naughty and nice theme so i'm just gonna again mask that off you don't need a stamp positioning tool this time you can just use your regular block like that okay i'm gonna ink it up with memento because we're gonna color these cuties with Stampin' Blends, just don't forget to take off your tape. I have done it before, you guys. I have forgotten to take off my tape, and it makes a huge mess. Stamp that, this is a white, stylish shape circle. And then we're gonna color it. And of course, I'm gonna use Poppy Parade for these guys, our little elves. I almost called them trolls, but no, they're elves. Now I am going to use a sentiment from a different set and I'll show you what we're going to do here in just a second. I couldn't get, like I said, the joy to really work with what I was doing. So I looked through my stamps and found a set that's not in the, the um, holiday catalog. You'll find it online. I can't remember if it's in the annual catalog. It might be but it's actually from last year, but it is still available if you don't have it yet. All right, I'm just taking some dark sweet sorbet, adding in, and while I'm here, I'm gonna color in these ornaments with dark, not sweet sorbet, Poppy Parade. We'll color in their faces, and I'm just using petal pink, faces and arms. Then the little jingle bells, I'm gonna use some lemon lolly okay and the wreath we're going to use granny apple green and i'm just going to go here with the light first And then I'm just gonna take my dark and kind of add in where there's like some little, you can see the little leaves, just add in some dark for some variation. Okay, so for the sentiment, I am using this set, Celebrate with Tags, and we're gonna stamp just a little banner in Poppy Parade. Okay, and then we're just gonna cut it out with our scissors. This set originally had dies. They are not available anymore, but if you have them, I think there was a die for this banner. 
but it's not difficult. It's easy to cut. I would recommend paper snips. These big scissors aren't doing such a good job. Okay, let's load it up. I think we need a smaller dimensional, which I don't have, so let's just use an edge piece. Put that across like that. Be jolly. Not naughty, be jolly. All right, a couple more dimensionals. Put these on here like that. And then we're gonna attach it. And I'm gonna put, let's see, we're gonna put, pull your ribbon over to the side and whichever side you have overlapping. The, I designed it so that the front flaps overlap just a tiny bit. Adhere it just to that side so that when you open it, it opens like that. Okay, so it stays on one side. All right, and there you go. How cute are these guys? I just love them. All right, so that's it for me today. We have two days left. Join me tomorrow for, what am I doing? Wishes all around. Tomorrow and Thursday's projects are simple. I've kept them simple because I know you guys are like me. We're getting down to the end. I need simple ideas. So we're gonna have some simple ideas over the next two days. All right, you guys, happy stamping. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.